Snake Pass, developed by Sumo Digital, is probably one of the most unique 3D platformers in recent years. Unlike most platformers and most video games in general, instead of controlling a human-like character, the player instead controls a snake named Noodle. And as a further break from the norm, the animal character you control doesn't happen to be one of those fantastic, super-evolved, anthropomorphic raccoons, bandicoots, or hedgehogs. Instead, Snake Pass seeks to emulate a real snake's musculature to create authentic serpentine locomotion, which means to progress through a given level, it's required to slither Noodle left and right, so that the giant muscle that is a snake's body can contract and release in order to move. And with this unorthodox method of movement comes an entirely unique control scheme to accompany it, with it being possible to slither, grip to get greater traction on a surface, move the head of Noodle precisely, as well as utilize the bird companion, Doodle, to pick up Noodle's tail end to save him from harm. I'm not gonna lie, in addition to learning how the game's physics engine works, this unique control scheme takes some time to adjust to. In fact, while there are many collectibles in every level just begging to be collected, it's actually recommended by me, and extremely likely the intended design by the developers for players to miss quite a few of these on the first run through of the game, and come back to get them later. Snake Pass gradually teaches the player the controls, how to maneuver Noodle, and how to deal with the weight of Noodle's body as they progress through levels without even needing to get the collectibles necessarily. It steadily ramps up the challenge, presents new level ideas, and sets up precarious situations to conquer all on its own in its short 3-5 hour campaign. The collectibles just serve as a nice way to challenge the Snake Pass pros, or King Cobras if you will. A fun optional challenge to prove you've mastered Noodle's movement options and best at Snake Pass's toughest challenges. A lot of the gold coins you can collect in particular ask the player to pull off some slick slithering, basically some tough obstacles that you're banging your head against the wall with unless you've already played through the game once and know how to maneuver Noodle to its fullest which is probably what a lot of the traditional games media struggled with when reviewing the game and criticizing its actually rather generous checkpoints. But anyway, returning back to the topic of controls, while they do take some time to click, once they do you'll realize how intuitive and perfect these controls are for this type of game, and you'll be pulling off advanced maneuvers with speed and ease. The skill-driven movement options here never quite reach the heights of the versatile, expressive, and complex options of the world's most famous plumber, but the fact that there is a learning curve here at all when it comes to movement is very commendable. Since looking back, a lot of 3D platformers have really emulated this aspect of skill and movement that players can learn from and perform advanced techniques with. Another thing about this game that I find particularly fascinating is how they design levels for a snake to traverse. According to one of Snake Pass's designers, David Dino, it was actually really difficult to design a platformer where you can't jump, stating that questions like, are you constantly going up with verticality, and what happens if you fall and have to redo it over and over again, were brought up often when trying to figure out how to best make a snake platformer. So to tackle these issues, they settled on the concept of floating islands being the levels that Noodle traverses. This preserved the verticality of the stages by having the setting be high up in the air, and got rid of the aspect of having to redo a level completely if the level was just one big vertical challenge. The setting of the floating islands also helps create an atmosphere I haven't really seen in a platformer in a long time. It's very tranquil, relaxed, and somewhat surreal. It almost reminds me of the floating worlds of the Spyro the Dragon series. But all those nice things aside, the biggest achievement of Snake Pass is how it creates a new type of gaming experience that hasn't been done before rather flawlessly. The realistic serpentine motions of Noodle and the special gameplay challenges it provides show the potential of games with controllable animal characters or things that don't utilize the typical humanoid template. It's easily the most realistic game involving animals as the playable characters since Rambo Studios 2009 hidden gem for Wii, Deadly Creatures, which saw the two playable characters being a scorpion and a tarantula in the Sonoran Desert. There's so much untapped potential and ways to innovate and provide remarkable gaming experiences as developers took the risk of making more games like Snake Pass with animal characters and the like. But the unfortunate reality is that games like Snake Pass have an uphill battle to fight from a marketing standpoint. Most players don't want to learn how to play a game with control scheme that seemed alien at first. And a lot of people will be turned off from a game that featured a more realistic snake than what Noodle ended up as, unfortunately. And this isn't just idle speculation on my part either. Reviews and impressions have unfortunately cemented the idea that Snake's Pass has control issues, when that really isn't the case. And during the development of the game, back when Noodle looked like a real snake and the game was more simulation-like, it creeped people out and turned people off in the game. With all that to contend with, it's a miracle that a perfectly solid and novel game like this had a good chance at all in this market, where games of an experimental nature are rather risky move, extremely hard to make, and may go unnoticed entirely. I don't know, I just thought it'd be a fairly interesting discussion to bring up since it's rarely talked about from what I've seen. Personally speaking, I think it'd be pretty cool to have a 3D platformer of sorts where you control a realistic moving insect and utilize their special capabilities to platform your way around a level. Something like a beetle or a spider in particular would be neat. Although I'm not entirely sure if you'd be able to queue up a spider if they really needed to for marketing though. Spiders are kind of like a special case, even if you try to make them kid friendly, try to make them appealing to children, try not to scare people to death with their outward appearance when designing them. It really, really just doesn't work. It's just, just not meant to be. It's like, ah, no, get rid of it. Stop, please, stop, it. stop, please, stop, please, stop, please, stop, please. Anyway, that whole tangent aside, my point is that Snake Pass is a great game, a special game. 
that actually does something we haven't seen before. And not poorly, mind you, it does it exceptionally well. You see, ever since the middle tier of video game publishers and developers kind of just died off slowly in the transition to HD consoles, you know, the tough folks that weren't responsible for making AAA games, but also weren't so small that they made what we call now indie games, the former THQs of the world, basically. Ever since they kind of died off, we kind of lost the outrageous and weird games that just had a big enough budget to go hog wild with their vision, more so than an indie game would have necessarily. Part of Snake Pass just reminds me of those game studios of yesteryear that made cool and unique games that left a strong impression, but didn't survive to the next generation, so to speak. It rekindles that long lost spirit of those forgotten developers. Anyway, to conclude, Snake Pass goes to great lengths to reinvent locomotion. And while it takes some effort to truly think like a snake, those that take the time to do so will be rewarded with a refreshingly unique puzzle platformer.